you know, this really was a nice step in the right direction for the DCEU. Because after the way Justice League performed, they needed something to help keep them afloat. <laughs> What's going on everyone, welcome back to my channel and another installment in my DCEU review series where I cover all the DCEU films I've yet to discuss leading up to my review of The Suicide Squad. And today we're talking about Aquaman. Before we begin, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on Aquaman were if you've seen it already and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Aquaman. This stars Jason Momoa as Arthur Curry, the human born heir to the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, who goes on a quest to prevent a war between the worlds of ocean and land. This is the sixth film in the DCEU, and it's directed by James Wan, who also co-wrote the screenplay with Jeff Johns and Will Beale. And while Wan is one of my favorite directors for horror movies, it is nice to see him occasionally branch out and try something out of his comfort zone, like he did with Furious 7 prior to this, which I do think is one of the better films in that franchise. And I'm glad that of all the DC heroes he chose to handle, I'm glad he went with Aquaman. I know this isn't exactly something you often hear, but Aquaman is one of my favorite DC superheroes. I always thought the way he was treated as this joke character was a bit unfair. While the concept behind him can seem silly, he has a really cool lore to him, and I've read my share of comics with him in them, mainly the New 52 run for those who know their DC comics, and there were plenty of times he could really be badass. And while this was on display a little bit in his previous appearance in Justice League, this really allowed the character to shine, and it made for quite the enjoyable solo adventure, and one that showed the DCEU stepping in the right direction after their hit and miss first few films. For one thing, the tone here is much more consistent for the most part compared to some of those earlier films, and it fully embraces what a superhero movie should consist of, which is a healthy mix of humor and pathos. There's an emotionally compelling story at the heart of it, but it's not even close to joyless, and it's also pretty consistently funny, though it never Never get to a point where the two tones found themselves conflicting with one another. What I appreciated was how it takes moments that seem like they're about to go down a dark and gritty route like the early DCEU movies and instead turn them on their head. For example, there's a scene towards the beginning where a bunch of men who look like tough guys approach Aquaman at a bar and when they ask who he is, you think they're about to get into a physical altercation but they reveal themselves to just be big fans of his and they ask for pictures which he begrudgingly goes along with in one of my personal favorite scenes. Moments like those were fun, and while he's known primarily for his dramatic work, Jason Momoa clearly makes for a great comedic actor, even though this isn't necessarily a full-on comedy. You can completely take him seriously, and he makes for a compelling lead, but here he does bring with him a little bit of that self-awareness that's reminiscent of older action stars like Stallone or Schwarzenegger, with little quips and one-liners thrown in there that I always got a kick out of. So at some point, I'd love to see him take on work in a full-on comedy. And we also get introduced to a lot of different characters from the Aquaman lore, from his older brother Orm, to Black Manta, the leaders of Atlantis, these mythical creatures, and so on. And one thing I've criticized the early days of the DCEU for doing is overstuffing their introductory films with too much too quickly. And what you get is a movie with so many different characters who we're all seeing for the first time, fighting for a relevant amount of screen time. Here though, I didn't quite feel that as much. Now, more than likely, considering Aquaman and his supporting cast of characters aren't anywhere near as popular as, say, Batman or Superman, this was the first time a lot of general audiences were being introduced to most of these characters, so it's definitely a lot. But it wasn't like we were getting hit with one right after another after another and the film would just move on quickly from their first time on screen. It instead tried giving everyone as strong of an introduction as possible, such as the opening scene involving Aquaman's parents, played by Tamira Morrison and Nicole Kidman, or the scene where we're introduced to Black Manta, played by Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, and his father, played by Michael Beach. And even with so many characters who they introduce, 
Juan made sure they had an impact when we first meet them, giving them strong emotional moments, but he also doesn't try making every subplot and storyline seem like they're fighting for the main storyline. He gives us enough so that it resonates the first time around and that we're hooked in, and even if we don't circle back to someone until much later on, it still sits with us and we feel the stakes of the situation, and I really appreciate that about this. The main conflict is between Aquaman and his half-brother Orm, also known as Ocean Master, played by Patrick Wilson. Now, while I think Wilson's stronger in protagonist roles as opposed to antagonist roles, he does a really solid job here, and his performance helps make this character one of the better villains in the DCEU. What helps is Ocean Master is one of those villains who thinks what he's doing is the right thing, which is what makes him compelling, even if his delivery can seem like it channels some typical movie villain cliches here and there. A lot of his attention is focused on uniting the Underseas Kingdom against the surface because of the pollution they caused over the years, which is a strong reason, even though he goes through some ruthless measures in order to get what he wants. And then you throw in there some jealous sibling rivalry, as he has nothing but resentment for his brother, which also drives him to do a lot of what he does throughout this, and that gives a lot of the conflict a really nice personal edge, which I liked. Though it's worth noting that Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as Black Manta, while not getting nearly as much screen time was also really solid here. Once again, the conflict stems from a personal vendetta against Aquaman, as he let his father die early on after they attempt to hijack a submarine. Now my only thing was, while that conflict set up early on and Mateen absolutely crushes it in the role, he is only used pretty sparingly afterwards, and he acts more as a hired mercenary by Ocean Master, which I was a bit disappointed by. But it goes back to what I was saying earlier that, even though he's only seen in a limited capacity, because his opening scene was so strong, it lands really well each time we do revisit the character, even if it was only for so much. So I was at least happy about that. And from the looks of it, it seems like they are setting him up to have a bigger role in the next film. So that's at least something to look forward to. And then aside, everyone else in the cast was pretty solid overall. I'd say the other two big standouts for me were Willem Dafoe as Volko and Nicole Kidman as Atlanta, both of whom were really enjoyable. This is definitely a more restrained Defoe, who I think is usually at his best whenever he gets to be more over the top, but even when he takes things down a notch, he's still enjoyable, as was the case here. And Kidman very rarely, if ever, turns in a bad performance, and as Atlanta, she maintained a consistently strong presence, and even if she's only in the movie for so long, she was solid each time we see her. So those are the two big highlights from the main cast, though I will say, a nice little cameo that I really enjoyed was Julie Andrews doing a voiceover as the sea queen. Carathon, mainly just because it's Julie Andrews and the novelty of seeing her in Aquaman of all things just was really fun to me. It's a quick role, but it was still cool, and hopefully she comes back for the sequel too. I also really like the overall visual aesthetic of the film and the emphasis on brighter colors and flashier imagery. Now, I do think not all of the CGI quite worked for me, including the de-aging of Willem Dafoe in some flashback scenes, but unlike the dreary early films, this had a much brighter color palette with really cool production designs that had a nice flair to them, and Juan really made sure to bring those out on full display, which is a credit to his skills as a director. Even though it's not a horror movie, he still places a nice focus on the atmosphere, and he even does get his chance to dip into some horror territory at times, such as when Aquaman's fighting against these monsters known as the Trench. Now while some of it may have looked a little cheesy at times, it didn't feel like it was much, because this was a film that didn't always take itself seriously. Going back to my comment about how Momo has a presence similar to Stallone or Schwarzenegger here, this felt like something that we could have seen made in the 80s. I mean, it even has classic 80s action star Dolph Lundgren in a supporting role. That says it all right there. And just like an 80s action movie, this is a lot of fun when the fighting kicks in. Whether it be the battles between Aquaman and the villains, whether it be the sea creatures going at it, it was great. There's a lot of focus on the spectacle of it all, which again goes back to Juan's visual flair as a director, and the battles would feel grand in scale and well choreographed. Not everything might have looked perfect, but I wouldn't say it looked flat out terrible, and it just focused on having a good time, and I really respect that, because I want to have a good time when watching these superhero movies and not walk out of them just feeling depressed. I mean, I want there to be emotion and stakes and conflict, 
but I also don't want dark and somber just for the sake of it. So I'm glad this film found a much better balance between heartfelt emotional moments and knowing when to have some fun. Now as for criticisms, I'd say the big thing is it does kind of go on a bit too long at times. I don't think the two and a half hour runtime was exactly needed because it mainly stretched things out due to some really dialogue heavy sequences and we'll get these long winded speeches at certain points or we'll get regurgitated information that we already know said later on in the movie and these don't take up the entire runtime or anything but there will be times it stops and goes for these dialogue driven moments and I just didn't think they were necessary they were basically reinforcing some points that we already knew and I think this could have been like a two hour movie or so and it would have been fine also the flashback sequences didn't quite work for me like I mentioned part of it's due to the CGI because the de-aging for Willem Dafoe was not all that great but some of the acting in these sequences, particularly by the kid playing the younger Aquaman, could have been a lot better in my opinion. Like I try not to go too hard on performances in movies because it's not always totally the actor's fault, but some of these exchanges with young Aquaman and Volko really weren't all that great due to their delivery, and we get a number of these throughout the film, so it became a bit distracting for me. But not to the point where the movie's ruined or anything, because the pacing and some of the delivery can be off-putting, but this is a film that does considerably more right than it does was wrong. And even watching this again for this review, while I did find these moments to stick out like a sore thumb, I was able to forgive them as the film would then move on pretty quickly to just having some good old fashioned fun. Aquaman is a nice step in the right direction for the DCEU. It's a film that knows how to have heart and give us some emotional stakes, but it also knows what kind of movie it is and has a good time with it, without coming off as tonally jarring. It has some great conflict due to the storylines with both Ocean Master and Black Manta, it has an awesome lead performance by Jason Momoa who is as charismatic as ever here, and when it focuses on its action scenes and set pieces, it might look a little cheesy at times, but for the most part, it just wanted us to have some fun, and considering what we got in the early days of the DCEU, it's incredibly refreshing to see. Aquaman gets an 8 out of 10. So stay tuned, as up next will be my final review before getting to the Suicide Squad, and that's Shazam. But in the meantime, let me know, did you see Aquaman, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Was this one of the better DCEU movies for you? Do you have a favorite Jason Momoa movie? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching, everyone, and keep having fun with film.